So we're in the middle of watching what is not even arguably, just fucking factually, one of the greatest movies of all time. One of the coolest movies of all time, no less. And this piece of crap <laughs> breaks out a bowl of chili beans. <laughs> and he, not only does he break out a bowl of chili beans out of fucking nowhere, and they're hot, guy, <laughs> and smelling up the joint, but he shoves it in my face and goes, want some beans? <laughs> I was sure. And I was like, i cut you the fuck up, man. I was sure my bean, guy. Who does that, man? Who the hell breaks out beans? Uh, a little popcorn, I guess. A little chip, maybe. <laughs> be Fucking a bowl of chili beans. Bean guy had a lot of meat in it. I hated that, man. Anyway, we're going to talk about Pulp Fiction. If we have to explain Pulp Fiction to you, then you're a degenerate that has no culture in you. Thoughts? Huh? Come on. I feel man. like even Al likes Pulp Fiction. No, nah, I don't think he likes Pulp Fiction. He doesn't? I don't know. I'm just, I'm positing a theory and it's that Al doesn't like Pulp Fiction. Why? I just got that's, the, that's my theory. That's, I'm not saying my theory is correct. I'm saying it's a theory. That's scumbag, Al. What, now it's a solid fact in your <laughs> yeah, world? Yeah, dude. Come on, guy. Pulp Fiction guy. It's a fucking minted American classic. Although now there's a sudden wave of people that are like, Tarantino sucks. What is that guy? Can we just accept that the guy's legendary? I wouldn't have. And they out break with him. out the. They break out the. Oh, he's just taking stuff from other movies. You're not saying anything new, guy. He literally said that himself. I mean, I wouldn't hang out with the guy. Who the hell's saying no, he I'm would just, hang out with I'm you? I'm just saying. I think he would not hang out with you first. I wouldn't want him to hang out with me. Wouldn't you though? No. I'd feel like I'd get annoyed. Well, I mean, that's obvious. But right. The point is. <laughs> What is Are we that? denying that he's a legend? Nah, I mean, you can hate a guy and still like him. All right. As long as you don't I'll break stop. out fucking beans <laughs> during their shows. Man, he would punch you in the Imagine guts. Imagine I walked into his little film, his little stupid... And broke uh, out beans. His stupid little theater that he has and just started eating beans. <laughs> I, would, I would voluntarily get out of the way so he could torpedo his gigantic head into your crotch, Damn, guy. Damn, homie. Come on, man. What's uh, your favorite segment in Pulp Fiction? We all know that Pulp Fiction was originally kind of like an anthology idea. And it just became this uh, kind of non-linear set of stories that all end up intermingling and interweaving with each other. What, what's your preferred segment? I mean, I'm a fan of Vin John Tra Vince Travolta. Vince Travolta guy. <laughs> yeah. Might as well be Vince Travolta because let's just face it. This is the coolest Travolta yeah, ever dude. was. And to this day remains the coolest thing he ever did. Now, I'm not going to say that everything he did after this sucked. Largely, it did. Battlefield Earth. Come on, guy. <laughs> what do you even bring up? What's, God damn it, dude. That is the fucking beans <laughs> during a movie of movies. I mean, you I... You just brought it up. I'm going to go with the, with the Mia one, I guess. With, with, with uh, John Travolta and Uma. Yeah, yeah. Just because it's a classic. There's also a lot of feet. Subtly so and unsubtly so there. So it's I mean, probably Tarantino's favorite. The foot is like a freaking part of the plot almost. Tarantino's like untouched ability, unparalleled ability, I should say, to foment <clears throat> pregnant moments that just stink of everything that the characters are intending, thinking, feeling, but are not necessarily saying. And... The interaction between Mia and Vincent Vega smacks of that. You know what I'm saying? The whole damn time. And he does this many times throughout many of his movies. And Glorious Bastards, it's full of those moments. Uh, most notably, the opening with Hans London, the, you know, and the interrogation. You know, there's just these moments that are pregnant, that, that, that reek of what everybody's thinking, Bean. but not necessarily saying. You know, later in, in Glorious Bastards, in the bar, you know, all those... He's really good at doing that with, like, dialogue. And, of course, the actors obviously contribute their part to all this. But he's really good at just making you feel what they're thinking. Beyond what they're saying. And they're saying a lot. Because it's Tarantino, baby. What did you uh, think about what happened to Antoine? Who's Antoine? Tony Rocky Horror. You know him. Fell out of a window. Hmm. Hmm. Well, that is one way to say it. Another way to say it would be that he was thrown out. Another way would be was he was thrown out 
by Marcellus, and yet even another way is to say he was thrown out of a window by Marcellus because of you. Is that a fact? No, no, it's not a fact. It's just what I heard. It's just what I heard. Who told you? They. They talk a lot, don't they? <laughs> they certainly do. They certainly do. Also, Danny DeVito? Danny DeVito produced Pulp Fiction. I was shocked was one by of the that producer of Fiction. You shouldn't be shocked. You're a DeVito fan. You know that he gets his... Yeah, he his get, toes he, into he gets, many a scheme. He gets weird. I'm gonna get real weird with it. I'm bean. Come on, guy. <laughs> fucking burping beans. <laughs> I feel like you're overdoing the knife, guy. I feel, I feel like you're overdoing the bean. <laughs> He's burping beans up yeah, here. It's, it's horrid, man. I'm trying to muscle through it. and It's killing me. I totally lost my train of thought. Good so one, that's man. pretty cool. That's your fault. We're you're fucking freaking, burping up we're beans. We're shooting on all cylinders, guy. It's and your cylinders. Your, my, my mouth cylinders. You're definitely shooting out the scent of bean <clears> into my <throat> fucking nostrils, guy. When you think about it, how much of a huge cultural moment Pulp Fiction was, it's actually ten times more impressive that Tarantino's maintained uh, his status as a filmmaker and the quality of his work. Because that's a monument of a flick. It's just like one of those things where you're like, God damn, everything in this thing works. Everything in this works. You know, so, I mean, it just, it just really underlines... His potency as a director, which I gotta say, for all those haters that are out there, what is that guy? Maybe just trying to be cool. It's, yeah, it's like this cool, like little thing to be against things, you know. I get not liking, say, the way he writes. People don't talk like that. People don't talk yeah. like that. But you know, with some and people, when... with some people, it just works because you yeah, understand yeah. that that's how that person views the world. Yeah. So well, that's how it works. Yeah. Uh, also can understand people not liking generally uh, the more, shall we say, touchy approaches to things. You know, the, it's always been a topic that his use of certain words uh, shouldn't be. You Homie know? is a little liberal with the N-word in this one. Yeah, but he... As look, in, like, he in the movie is like... <laughs> he and Sam Jackson make a fucking rock-solid point. And I gotta agree with this point. And it's not just because I like Tarantino. People do talk like that among each other in the world. You know what oh, I'm saying? Yeah, all the time, man. Be in a prison, you know, uh, hang around fucking people that are prone to a criminal lifestyle. They're not going to be talking nicely to each other. They're going to be saying some fucked up shit in fucked up ways. There's entire worlds that people talk like this, you know, entire, entire uh, scenes where people are just like, they behave that way. You know what I'm saying? So I get the controversy. He's a white guy and he's he's putting... You know, these words and characters' mouths. But at the same time, he did get the pass from Sam Jackson. What, are you going to argue with Sam Jackson? That's a good point. And Sam Jackson's point was very much the same. Like, dude, these are people talking this way because that's how, how it is, homie. Was Sam Jackson anything before Pulp Fiction? Um, well, he had some drug problems. Well, but I mean, he was I like... Uh, personally, I didn't want to know his life story. I'm getting to it, see? Talking film, guy. He had some drug problems, which is kind of... Uh, you know, hindered his career, career's growth. Mm -hmm. But he'd been in a few things. Uh, but Pulp Fiction's pretty much like the big, you know, it was a big moment for a lot of people. Ving? Can you think of another Ving movie where he's remotely this cool? And he gets ass raped. And he's fucking cool. Yeah, how can you be cool? He's even cool while he's getting ass raped. How, how do you do that? I don't know about that, dude. You're saying he's not cool? His, Would you I mean, argue post that... Post-ass rape, he was cool. He was pretty But not cool. midst ass You don't rape. lose your cool just because... Oh, I mean, you lose your cool, but your coolness... I think the whole point of raping another man is to see his coolness be gone in the, well, by your just, power. That just goes to show you how cool he was in the role. That didn't you think he up. kept his power while he was being... He's a power bottom? He definitely was a power Damn, bottom. Damn, okay. The, the uh, gold watch segment was the portion of the script that was not entirely Tarantino's work. You know, it was originally a Roger Avery piece. If I remember correctly, the original plan was to have different people direct different parts. Like four rooms? Uh, kind of, yeah. Only good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, uh, it just became a Tarantino-driven affair. And uh, Roger Avery, uh, you know, who worked with him... At the video store and then went on to his own career afterwards. 
Um, he wrote this particular oh. segment. Terrence, come on, guy. You got to stop that, man. Yeah, it's diapers. I am going to shoot you, guy. <laughs> it's diapers, dude. This is atrocious, <laughs> guy. Who does that? Who fucking keeps on burping beans? I got that. The, the beans were ever introduced. I got bad. The, the acid reflux from the bean, man. I hate it, guy. I hate it. I hate that about you. I might just have to cut you right now. But anyway. Uh, yeah, so uh, they started writing this thing. It became more about, you know, let, let's make this uh, what it eventually became, right? But uh, memory serves me right. They were writing this in France or something like that. France, guy. And uh, Avery had to go back to America for X reason or whatever. And Tarantino just pounded out the segment and basically rewrote and re- rewired the, the structure, right? And uh, this led to, like, a weird <coughs> period. It's not that they were never not friends, but that there was clearly some issues that arose from this. Because, obviously, Tarantino went on to great stardom, and Roger Avery did not, you know. They won the Academy Award together, but nobody remembers that. So it's kind of like when bands fight because the lead singer gets all the attention. Mm-hmm. The difference here is that... Uh, Tarantino, according to Avery, did ask him if he could just put his name on it. As in, like, written and directed by Tarantino. Because he thought it would just vibe better. And it's very clear that he rewrote the segment, right? Even Avery agrees to that. But (coughs) it did lead to some, I guess, kind of disconnect between them for a while. And maybe not immediately because Tarantino helped produce stuff from him and then, you know... But there was a uh, something happened there. They, they, they there was a distance. But they've, you know, kind of rekindled the friendship here lately. They're doing a, a podcast. They never really fully divulged the details of what happened between them. But Avery just basically summarizes it as a, you know, it is what it is. But it's uh it's my personal favorite segment. I think it's the one that feels like uh, a little bit um, out of place, and yet fits it so perfectly mm. it's also got the weirdest stuff in it uh it's what easily bruce willis's coolest role in my opinion i, I mean know, hardigan's pretty cool guy hardigan's cool but he's i don't know i really like i really like butch there's something love butch. there's the underdog quality to him there's the the, oh, like oh, moral compass that he has and cutest girlfriend ever no he you hang, hate her he hangs dong he does hang dong, but that's not super important. Dude hangs guy. dong, guy. I feel like it was just a glimpse of a dong, guy. Yeah, but you see it. If you're going to hang dong, you just might as well do a Kevin Bacon just stand there with it, not give me a glimpse. Hate his girlfriend, though. No, oh, that's sucker. Sucker, guy. Like a bean. <laughs> Marvin, what do you make of all this? Man, I don't even have an opinion. Well, you got to have an opinion. I mean, do you think that God came down from heaven and stopped... Oh! What's happening? Oh, man. Oh, man, I shot Marvin in the face. You apparently seemed offended that Phil Lamar was in this. No, it's just the guy gets, like, freaking top billing in the beginning, in the credits in the beginning, and he's literally in the first second and gets murked. I feel like he was pretty fair with the billing. Everybody's, like, pretty much... The cab driver gets fucking billing. Come on, guy. It's a, basically the same size. Yeah, but I feel like that was more... Uh... Uh, important role than Phil Lamar. Phil Lamar blowing up is pretty important, guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's a good point. I know you could argue that that, that was just his viscera. Well, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. Like, but is he's he getting, still is he getting Phil credit Lamar. for the vis? Yeah, big vis, no less. Hey, huh? Imagine viscera with <laughs> Phil Lamar. He wouldn't fit in the back <laughs> of the car, dude. Man. Harvey. Well, let's not start sucking each other's dicks quite yet. Harvey Keitel has got to be the suavest mofo on the planet. I kind of love Harvey Keitel, guy. Okay? He is uh, an interesting fellow. He's pretty cool. He's renowned for being some sort of a mercurial chap, but I mean, come on, well, the guy I'm gives saying, you results. I'm saying I'm not. I don't want to hang out with him. I'm just saying he's a cool actor. Also, he's like eighty something. He still looks pretty good. Yeah, well, he's got the perma cool look. Yeah. You ever seen him in Bad Lieutenant? No. no, you know why? Haven't shown it to you. Yeah. Also, too, he hangs dong in that book. Oh shit! And I'm not talking some weird. Bruce like, Willis. You barely dong. missed yeah. it. <laughs> Fucking Bruce Willis hang dong. I'm talking full on dong, guy. Okay? Damn, homie. Five long years he wore this watch, up his ass. Then he died of dysentery. He gave me the watch. I hid this uncomfortable hunk of metal up my ass two years. I love Chris Walken. We know this. You're gonna hate on Chris Walken, guy. No. Hear me out, Bean Boy. I love Chris Walken. 
But man, do these movies really emphasize how weird of an actor he, he is. He is weird. You know, his line delivery has got to be one of the strangest. Technically, if this guy hadn't been in great movies, would we be saying this guy's a bad actor? I don't know. Because his line delivery is so fucking strange. It's just the weirdest line delivery ever. You know? And of course, I got introduced to him, like most people, through great movies. So you don't even go, McBain. this guy, no, McBain's an awful guy. <laughs> you don't even go, this guy stinks. You, you, but you always go, this guy's weird. But the weirdness is well, what makes on, him though. cool, okay? But if we had been introduced to him straight up through fucking turds movies, that's right, turds movies, like Country Bears or some shit Kangaroo that he's Jack. in. Kangaroo Jack. Would we be like, damn, this guy stinks? No. I don't know. He looks cool, that's for sure. So that that might, you know, deflect, but... He's weird, guy. Yeah, he's weird. A hundred percent weird in terms of delivery. Are you hating on him? No, I'm just what saying, the hell, man. Like this is a movie where only two roles stand out to me as extremely out of place. One of them is Christopher Walken, but he's out of place just because he's weird. Yeah. And again, the weird delivery. The other one is Tarantino, who obviously, yeah, compared to everybody he's else, not good. yeah, you put him next to these titans that are acting around him, and you know, come, he, it looks all the worst, right? But with Walken, you don't even think that. But you, we can't say that he's acting on the same level as everybody else. He's great. He's guy. in the weird. Yeah, but level. his weirdness fits into this weird movie. I'm not saying that his weirdness is bad. I'm saying that the weirdness is 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 hella weird. It's not weird like, oh, he's. You, you just, I, every time I see him I act, would, I'm like, what made him think that this line delivery is adequate? I would dare say that this is the least weird he's been. I'm not saying it's the least or the most. I'm just saying it's still weird. Yeah, it's still weird, especially when he says ass. And do you not wonder what makes an actor think this is the way to deliver this line? I don't think that he even thinks about that shit, guy. He's just Chris Walk. I'm not saying he's he not Chris Walken. Obviously, he, he's doing his own thing. That's why we love him. I'm just saying, can we accept that the man's dude, delivery the dude, is Dude, the out, dude out, danced with aliens, guy. And you're freaking questioning him? Okay, Communion. That's a movie where you, <laughs> the movie's awful. I know some people really you know laud it for being creepy. And I get it. If you watch that as a kid, you'd probably be like, these scenes are hella fucking strange. <laughs> But that's a movie if you come, dude, you gotta stop with the beans, man. It's a fucking atrocious. I hate it. <laughs> it was a mistake. The bean. I would argue that the mere thought of bringing a fucking bowl <laughs> I was, of beans I was hungry. into Pulp Fiction in the middle of Pulp Fiction, a solid hour to go, no less. I was hungry, you guys. You bring in a bowl of goddamn steaming. Chili beans. I had to urinate and I was like, you know, I'm going to make a bean. No, nah, homie, that's no excuse. That's a worse excuse. I had to urinate. So you said, let me make a bean. <laughs> a single bean? I made the bean and then went to pee. And then when I got out, it was warm already. I hate that. <laughs> I hate that, man. <laughs> anyway. What? Communion. Yeah. You know, awful movie. Or whatever you may think of the movie. If you watch it, his acting is so fucking bizarre in it. That it's beyond bizarre. You know what I'm saying? Like 10,000 times more bizarre than ever. Mm. And you're like, why? What What will make you think this is the, the, the way to go with this? But yeah, that's the only enjoyable part of communion for well, me. Well, there you go. It worked. Uh, it didn't work in the way it was intended. I'm just saying he's a weird cat is all I'm saying. I feel like you hate that? him, guy. No, I love Christopher Walken. Nah, homie, you're hating on his ass. Come on, guy. I would rather hate on Christopher Walken than eat a bean during his nah, fucking scene. I would rather eat a bean during his scene. Of course you would. You did that. The bean specifically. scene. Specifically. No, I was right after. Uh, the same thing in my book. <laughs> Any scene bordering Chris Walken and you eat a bean is you <laughs> eating a bean during the Chris Walken scene. What's a what's a good movie to eat bean during them? None. There's no movie De to... Deer Hunter? No, especially not Deer Hunter. <laughs> you suck say. that bean, guy. <laughs> during the Russian relay sequence yeah. says eat a bean? <laughs> no, man. Ah, dude, I hate that. I'm trying, guy. That's bad. You're not trying, guy. You literally shoveled beans into your fucking mall for ten hours. Now you're burping them out into my fucking face, it's guy. Who does saga, that? Guy. Aggressive. What is this guy? Too concentrated on beans? I was gonna say something. Nah, you stop me, nah. asshole. I feel like you're thinking about beans. I was kind of thinking about. The, I think that's in the briefcase is beans.
We happy? Vincent! We happy? Yeah, we happy. I'll try to bring you out of your bean haze into the conversation. Mm -hmm. If you're leaving me high and dry on, staring into the void of bean, uh, by asking, do you have any theories about what's in the case? Bean, I already said. No, homie. Can't be beans. I don't know, guy. Gold? I don't think it's gold. Why what? is there like a weird hum? What is the hum? Why does a uh, uh, pumpkin, Tim Roth's character, why is he like ensorcelled by it? Why is call he it so beautiful? I don't know, guy. Any thoughts? No. The yeah. long, uh, one of the long, there's many theories, of course, but the one Means? of the longest standing theories, which, uh, you know, of course, Tarantino's mum on it, unless he said something recently. But giving all the, like, weird kind of spiritual subtext, especially, you know, with certain characters, uh, i.e. Jules, Sam Jackson's character. The long standing theory that always rang with me was that it's Marcellus Wallace's soul. You know, and some people point to, like, Marcellus has this band-aid on the back of his neck. I don't know if that was like a choice they made. Or, or just cut uh, I think, you know, I think Homeboy just had some ingrown hairs. You yeah. know, he's been around black folk. He's had, you know, they get a, you know, really bumpy the, skin. The skin they, wasn't yeah. great back there. So I'm thinking they were just hiding that and, they, and it just kind of jive with what they were going and, and it works. It's definitely a visual trademark for the character that works. But uh, I think that's a cool little theory as far as theories go. Uh, because it, it really fits with what uh, the path that that uh, Jules character has taken, you know, and the idea that Marcellus would let him go on this journey that he's going to go on. It kind of supports that. Why would this criminal let anybody go from his employ unless he had he shares some sort of weird understanding of some sort of uh, this spiritual path that that this is going to be his excuse? I think it's a pretty cool theory. Uh, and it works, given the kind of weird nature around this thing that people are looking at. It's just one of those things that uh, fits naturally into the script. And you don't really think about it unless you want to think about it. Which is, again, you just got to kind of applaud that. That you achieve that with something so intentionally vague, you know. So, thoughts? Mean. Come on, man. <laughs> Fucking vile. <laughs> anyway, let, let, let's wrap this up. Me any final thoughts that are not being centric in <laughs> the rating? Go. No rating is a mad ten. Obviously. Could have fooled me with all that beat. <clears throat> time. No, homie, mad ten. Yeah, Pulp Fiction's a ten. I mean, come on, guys. Is this even a fucking discussion at this point? Give it anything but a ten. I will punch you and or feed you beans. What's that? Oh, it's uh some birds that live in my kitchen. Come on, guy. I'm the heathen. I allow birds to nest in my. Kitchen and that's I bad? bean to freaking rest in my mouth. Nah, boy. You didn't let that boy rest in your mouth. He's fucking chucking it into the air right now, man. It stinks. Well, it's trying to escape. Yeah. Well, there you go. That's <laughs> not good. Not my fault. The beans are like, get me out of here, gang. <laughs> this was a fucking video. <laughs> it was weird. Hate your beans, man. Yeah, it's not my fault, gang. Yeah, it's your fault, gang. Anyway, uh, let us know what you think about Pulp Fiction. And bean. And the fucking beans, apparently. You know, the favorite, of course, for everybody's Vincent Vega, so I got, I'm not going to pretend that it's not for me, even though my favorite segment, yeah, I mean, I guess he's in it, but he gets offed, which will, should make me frown. But, you know, I remember doesn't. I was outraged by that as a feeling. Come on, man. I was outraged. I was like, you were probably eating fucking beans. Why? I was like three years old. God I didn't even know it was out of order.